on the left hand side, you can see the arrow, you're produce, producing massive amounts of content. Google basically takes, a uh, Google basically any search engine, right? Search engine takes all of this content, puts it into an indexation. Uh, Google's bots basically, they crawl the web for these things and they associate all of this content with you, right? For example, your business or as a, your own personal brand. They index all this website, right? People discover it by searching for terms that are related, searching for terms that you are selling for, like products you're selling for or knowledge that you are uh, basically writing about through content marketing. And this will generate traffic, right? This gener generation of traffic would create interest because people are interested in your content, right? They're, they're starting, uh, you're starting to become a likable business, likable audience, uh, sorry, like a business or like a likable personal brand. And eventually they move on to the influence consideration stage where they will eventually uh, move on to the purchase segment. All right, so this is basically the structure of how content marketing and SEO works. This is how uh, people build their presence. So the next thing I'm gonna move on is what, uh, so basically the entire structure of digital marketing, right? So you have to look at it as this is an entire structure back end that you can build, right? This is basically everything you need to know so that you know what to focus on. I really believe in knowing your end goal before starting something such that you don't do things without direction. You're very focused and you're able to utilize your resources uh, quickly as well as uh, efficiently. So at the top there, as you can see, there are the three, uh, I guess, main uh, traffic generation funnels. I mean, eventually um, the main goal is to generate traffic into these funnels such that they will all create and funnel down into this purchase segment, right? So as you can see on the left hand side, there's SEO and content marketing. And then I also put long brand equity exists forever and long term concurrent. Uh, what I mean by this is that SEO and content marketing, because they are uh, pieces of content that live on the web forever, they exist forever. Not only that, they create a uh, very, very valuable brand equity because you are creating uh, original content for your brand that nobody else can replicate. So this will already form the identity of your brand and the things that it represents such that um, it, it may not really be a quantifiable uh, mon monetary value, but it's definitely something that differentiates yourself from your competitors. The third thing that I put in there is long term slash concurrent would be is that this cannot this method cannot be used alone, right? For example, if you were uh, be trying to build a business, right, you already have reoccurring costs in your business. You should not uh, definitely put hundred percent of your resources in SEO and content marketing. You should do it as a concurrent thing. So for example, you're running Facebook ads and Instagram ads on your social media marketing. You should definitely do SEO and content marketing on the site concurrently, such that you're building a long-term strategy for your traffic generation uh, funnels, basically. The second thing would be affiliate programs, right? So a lot of companies, for example, e-commerce, they have affiliate programs where they offer uh, discount codes to people as you can, uh, not sure whether you're familiar, for example, like Instagram, uh, there's certain brands who are like, uh, use 20% or use discount code, something, something, something for 20% off, right? So those are affiliate programs. So generally what they'll do is um, recruit, these companies will recruit affiliates, bring them into the affiliate programs and the affiliates will just promote for them on their behalf. All right, so that's just another uh, traffic generation strategy. Uh, the last one would be uh, social media marketing as well as PPC. So this is put together uh, PPC and marketing before uh, because um, both of them are paid forms of social advertising. All right, social media marketing, so you just run an ad. PPC would be uh, your search engine ads. All right, so you think of the top layer right there as just your traffic generation funnels. So the next one would be all of this traffic needs to be driven somewhere. And that your that destination would be your website. The website where you're gonna be selling your products, your eBooks, your digital stores, your services, uh, consultations, etc., etc. All right, so the main purpose of digital marketing is to drive traffic to your website. Just have to remember that, okay. Um, after that, after people go to your website, generally you want them to come and be become a customer. So you hope that they become a purchase, right? After the purchase, there's ability for you to collect their emails and such that you're able to use those emails to bring them into your email marketing list that you can connect to through your email marketing software. Or uh, the, the new thing would be the new messenger bots, right? So you can bring them into your messenger bots uh, subscribers, but I won't be going in depth into this because it's a different topic. Uh, and then afterwards, once they're on your list, you can basically email your email marketing list because they are already in your list. You have authority to send them uh, legally 
and you can re-engage the audiences of yours, these purchases of yours, such that if you want to drive a promotion, for example, if you're launching a new product, if you're having uh, a new pro- promotion where you want to spread, uh, make it viral or something, right? You can utilize your email marketing list and to email these people and to drive traffic back onto your website. All right. So the reason, uh, all right, the reason why. I talk about uh, this as a long-term strategy because this is basically the structure of any sound online business. This is basically the back end of any online business. A lot of the times, uh, a lot of people go into paid advertising thinking this is the only sort of traffic generation method that I should use because it's effective, right? But that's absolutely not the case, all right? The cost of advertising is going to go up. So you definitely need to invest in long-term traffic generation uh, funnels and methods, all right. So what I suggest, or that's or what a lot of people do for the very stable businesses is first always start out with paid traffic, right? You're always trying to get traffic and collecting data as fast as possible. After that, uh, and concurrently, you're doing your SEO, you're doing your content marketing. Affiliates is an entirely separate thing. If you want to go into it, there's definitely an option for it. However, uh, these are just generally the two uh, different uh main things that people generally use after that once you set up your traffic generation ads you must set up your email marketing list this is so important because people forget that uh being the cost of advertising and to acquire a customer a new customer is probably the most expensive thing that any business can do so what you can do is basically drive traffic into these funnels from the top layer you drive them and collect the emails and you're after after a while after you're spending money and making money as well through your uh, paid advertising then you're able to drive uh then you're able to generate these emails and create this list of uh, really really valuable customers that you know are willing to purchase your product and are really very warm in traffic i'm sorry about that the standard e-commerce conversion rates not conversation so sorry about that uh it's a uh, normally around three to seven percent if you were for example a very very niche store a brand that the local community has already known for quite a while and is quite well liked then of course conversion rates will be higher and that's good for you so these are just conservative estimates so for example if i was on, on a seven percent conversion rate you would expect at every uh, step of the funnel there will be only a seven percent so basically a 93 percent attrition rate so just think of it as numbers right if i'm driving 1,000 people through the first layer and I have a 93% attrition rate, so 7% CPA, which is basically cost per action, the next action would be moving onto the website. I would expect only 70 people to move onto the website, right? After the 70 people move onto the website, I only expect 7% of that to go to the purchase uh, step. So I'm expecting five people to only buy. And for example, if I'm only selling a, a, a $30 product, right? A $10 at cost price, $20 profit margin, I'm making $100. And the thing is, to generate this 1,000 uh, eyeballs in sales, it's very, very cheap at this moment in digital advertising. Uh, for example, a $5 ad can generate, if good ad copy and stuff, can generate you around 800 uh, views, impressions, in, essentially. So you can... Uh, I'll talk about this later, but basically, as you can see, it's a very, very feasible technique and very, very scalable method of advertising. All right. You have to understand um, to be able to understand your costs very effectively such that you market effectively, but generate a lot, a lot of money at the same time. All right. So uh, saying all this, this is assuming that these things I have, have you you are able to do it and you have in place. So having these type of numbers will be having a good ad creative. So you got to learn how to uh, copyright a bit. You have to have good interest targeting. So you need to know how to use your platform, your social media platforms and PPC to really set up the ads properly. All right. So the next one would be also copywriting, which is why I said just now, as well as the last one would be you need to have an ability to do budget optimization, right? Using data to make decisions further on in the step uh, further on in your marketing process right you run an ad you see data that's coming back you need to know when to pull the ad kill the ad uh, basically trim the fat or continue the ad scale the ad all right all right as i was saying before even though there's just a seven percent conversion rate right on uh, uh conservative estimates and that doesn't mean that the 907, sorry, 930, right? 1,000, sorry about that. Uh, 930 people that were not engaged in the 7% is useless. Those 930 people are considered warm traffic. Uh, they have lower cost of advertising. They have higher conversion rates and easier to engage, right? These um, 930 people who did not do anything, 
about your website, right? Did not do anything about your ad, did not take action on your ad, did not show interest on your ad. They are still very, very valuable numbers because it tells you that there are 970, 930 people out there who know about your brand and you can potentially re-advertise to these people such that you uh, they may be potentially interested in your product again and uh, maybe also uh, purchase in the end, all right? Okay, so how does retargeting work? Retargeting is extremely, extremely powerful because as I said before, there's lower cost of advertising and generally higher conversion rates on your retargeting uh, custom audiences. So you can create, uh, so basically the picture on the right here is how to create a custom audience on Facebook. Right, you can use the data that is driven from your ads and you can use them uh, to really potentially source out and really pinpoint certain specific pockets of audiences that you can retarget to such that uh, you're able to increase your conversion rate. Right? So as you can see here, you can pull out a customer file. So, um, so you can use a customer file to match your uh, customers with people on Facebook. So basically uh, things from your website, for example, uh, and they have purchased something, you can export that CSV file from your website and you can put it on, on um, Facebook and it will basically automatically generate a custom audience using those data. Uh, the second one would be using website traffic. So for example, someone on your website he goes from Facebook to your website and then he on your website, you cl he clicks on a certain product page, right? I can use potentially that data of that customer who did that action and uh, specifically exclude that type of customer and basically retarget to those people such that uh, if I was um, purposely advertising that particular product that he uh, chose on, that, that he clicked on the page on, I can uh, basically advertise to that customer. That one would be uh, app activity. It's kind of the same thing as website traffic. If someone did something on your app, you can retarget to them specific to the action. The next one uh, will be offline activity to create a list of people who interacted with your business in store. So it's kind of like website traffic. Uh, number five would be engagement. Create a list of people who engage with your content on Facebook or Instagram. So for example, if you're running an ad and that uh, people who have seen your ad, for example, like or share your uh, post, you can purposely exclude and create a custom audience for that particular group of people who have liked your ad and then you can retarget those people because they have already shown interest into your product. All right. So um, this is really important because you are able to create uh, value ladders, right? You're able to create value for uh, different groups and customers uh, that uh, exhibit uh, different types of area. Uh, basically, you can create value for different types of customers that exhibit different types of behavior, right? And you can really make ads that are suitable for these types of people. So for example, uh, if I know someone who shares and uh, potentially likes my ad and uh, shares it, I can potentially retarget that person, for example, with a steeper discount on the second time I retarget him, such as it's giving him more incentive uh, to buy my product. All right, so that's basically the power of retargeting. All right, moving on to data is king. Data is king because data gives you information and information will influence your purchase decisions, will influence how you are setting up your ads. All right, so you need to understand that uh, Facebook, uh, basically it's called the Facebook pixel, but basically any social media platform uses this as well. They collect data from your ads, uh, for example, uh, impressions, click-through rates, etc etc and um, they're having all this data basically that you've bought right you have used uh, money to pay for these ads and this data is, is, is coming from those ads you can use this data and you can basically create a more valuable audiences to your marketing funnel this is extremely important because the faster and the more data that you collect, the cheaper your advertising becomes, the more precise your interest targeting becomes and uh, product market fit will be even even easier all right, so the, the, the aim of the game is basically to start off with social media marketing, Google PPC, paid traffic. You, uh, you should spend upfront on, for, on ads for your data first, such that you're able to customize and optimize your ads in the future, such that your cost of advertising will also go down. That's why data is king. All right, so we're moving close to the end um, of this. It's around half an hour already. Um, so basically data tracking, right? So how do you track your data? So internal platforms wise, social media platforms wise, uh, there will generally be data insights tools that are already um, categorizing and uh, putting all your data into demographics, pie charts, etc. 
etc. There's also Google Analytics where you can link up your website to and you can see the types of actions that people are performing on your website. Google Analytics is free. You can go um, register using your Gmail account and it's a very fast five minute process. All right, so what type of tools does SEO need, right? If you're doing SEO, uh, you're engaging someone, these are the type of tools that uh, they may be potentially using. SEMrush, uh, Keyword Tool, Hrefs are all competitive analysis tools. Answer the public would be more uh, creating more um, uh, semantic or keywords. Screaming Frog would be uh, basically all the backend stuff. So um, finding out uh, whether your website, for example, has uh, thin content, duplicate content, etc., etc. All right, email marketing. These are the different email marketing softwares that are available. And definitely there are a lot more of them. It's just, I'm showing you just a few. Aweber, Clavio, MailChimp, uh, Benchmark, GetResponse. There are a lot that also uh, integrates with a lot of uh, email marketing slash abandoned cut emails type of uh, features. So you can ex definitely explore on that. All right, so coming to a close, the cost of advertising is only getting higher in digital marketing because as the big brands start to move away from traditional advertising, uh, they're going to be spending more money into digital advertising. And when that happens, there is more competition. When there is more competition, uh, the prices of advertising will go up. So you need to keep this in mind because you, if you are running a business right now or you're planning to start a business, you should definitely and must do digital marketing at some point to really establish your footprint uh, in the online presence. All right. This is basically my last slide. The main takeaways of my entire presentation, I'm splitting this into a two-part series, so uh, thank you for, for watching so far. It's basically, you need to build your back-end systems, right? You need to understand your entire structure of your online business. You need to understand uh, basically the monetary value of every what purchase and every customer, how much is that worth to you, such that you're able to do budget optimization. You build these backend systems such that you're able to automate your processes in the future and you can do a hands-off technique, right? You can just let people run your network while you uh, are focusing on the more important things such as how do we create more engaging ads, how can we value our customers and uh, bring them value even more. The third one would be don't be afraid to spend money first up front because the data that you are investing in right now is very and extremely important. This is the data that will shape your type of customer profile that your uh, ad account will generally target. These are the types of uh, like customer personas that are being created such that your interest targeting are more precise and that your cost of advertising will go down as well. All right, so you invest in data up front so you're able to reap the rewards later on. Okay, so my last point would be invest in the long-term strategies while doing your short-term strategies. So even though um, social media marketing, like paid advertising, organic traffic, SEO content, content marketing, they are both should be long-term strategies. Generally, what people do is that uh, they do social media advertising. They collect all the data, right? They collect amounts, heaps of data. They use their data to retarget, to create audiences, to build up their email marketing list, and after a while, they are left with a lot, a lot of data. All this data can be used and then uh, be learned such that the cost of advertising goes down. Concurrently, you're doing SEO and content marketing and you're creating heaps of content uh, for your potential customers to consume and such that you're able to generate organic traffic from these pieces of content in blogs, uh, videos, uh, photos, uh, podcasts, for example. All right, so you definitely need to understand every part of your business and understand there's a long-term game as well as a short-term game. Uh, paid advertising is only gonna go up and that is why you should definitely use paid advertising first and as well as concurrently build your backend systems, content marketing teams, uh, your email marketing lists, etc., etc. All right, I've come uh, to the end of my presentation about the introduction to digital marketing. I hope you've learned something and gained some sort of value out of it. If you have any questions concerning digital marketing or anything else, uh, feel free to put down them down in the comment section below and I'll definitely answer it. Thank you for watching and making it this far into the video and see you in the next one.